Hello my friends, welcome to Pro Strings. I'm Henriette and this is lesson 6 in the Crickbaum Violin Class for Beginners course. It's lovely to see you back here today and in this lesson we're going to consolidate what we already know on playing on open strings and we are also today going to explore the various parts of the bow in a little bit more detail. So I'm assuming you have got your violin and your bow ready your bow is tightened and it's got rosin on and your violin is tuned, so let's get started. And today we're going to get started with an exercise to explore the different sections of the bow. So what I'd like you to do is have your proper bow hold um, and let's put your violin up on your shoulder. Now we're going to take the bow away from the violin and we're going to come down on the G string first of all at the heel of the bow so really aim to come down at the heel of the bow just set it there for a moment and then we're taking it away again now this time we're going to come down in the middle of the bow on the g string so measure out where the middle is and then let your bow come down there on the g string and now let's take your bow away again and let's come down at the point of the bow on the g string there we are so that is the basis of this exercise. Now, we're going to practice this a little bit differently now. And let's take your bow away from the violin. So stretch your arm out. Come down on the D string now. In the middle. Set it in the middle like that. And now drop your shoulder down. Okay, take your, take your bow away again. Now come down at the heel of the bow on the D string drop your shoulder <laughs> this time let's take your bow away from the violin and let's come down on the A string at the point of the bow so we find the A string which is your second string to the left as you know and now drop your shoulder down as you've set your bow onto the string if you find that difficult to reach the point of the bow it may well be that your arm is there and then I can't reach it you see so move your arm so that it is in front of your body and you set it on the A string. Lovely. Take it away again. Now let's come down at the heel of the bow on the A string. Great stuff. Drop your shoulder down, remember. Take it away again. We're going to explore the E string now. So let's set your bow in the middle on the E string. There we are. Drop your shoulder down. Take it away again. Let's go at the point of your bow on the E string. Remember to move your arm forward. There we go. Take your bow away. And now we're going to go on the E string at the heel of the bow. Like that. Brilliant. And you will notice that this exercise gives you a lot of bow control. So we're really thinking about the various places on the bow where you can set your bow. And then we know also which string we're going to be using. So the strings, for those of you who are just coming into this course, it's G, D, A and E. Or I can show it to you like this. G, D, A and E. Lovely. Now, let's now set your violin up on your shoulder and shift it as far as you can to the side so that your earlobe is just above the chin rest. This thing, it's a crazy word, it's called the chin rest, but it's nowhere near your chin if you're doing it correctly. So what we want to avoid is you playing like this. So if that is you, slide your violin over your collarbone to the side so that your earlobe is over the chin rest. There we go. And we're just going to play on the lower half of the bow right now. So in a moment we're going to start at this end of the bow and we're going to go up to the middle. If you've still got your marker in the middle of the bow, that's excellent. If you haven't got a marker where the middle of the bow is, so a little pencil line or a little sticker or even a piece of sellotape round around your bow, please add that now because we're going to be using it. And this this area of the bow is called the lower half and you can probably see why and we're going to be playing on the lower half of the bow today so let's go on to the g string uh, check over your bow hold check over your stance check over your violin this is not too high or too low 
and with a slight tilt to the right hand side we're going to go on the G string now and we're going to play eight short bows on the G string. Here we go and one Let's go on to the A string now, the A string. It's eight short bows on A. Off we go and... Good job. Let's do the same thing now on the E string. Again, we're starting at the heel of the bow. Are you ready? And one, two. Lovely job. And finally, we've got our D string still to play. So we're starting at the heel of the boat. Remember to drop your right shoulder down. And... the bow and we're going to start in the middle where your marker is and we're going to play to the point and back to the middle so we're really staying at this upper half of the bow throughout this exercise now this time we're going to start on the E string so let's get you ready in the middle of your bow remember that your hand should be in front of you like that okay and when we're ready here we go eight times on E and shaky try to drop that shoulder even more that shaking is usually a sign of tension in your upper arm here so let go of the tension if that is you if that is possible now that doesn't go away overnight but when you keep on trying to relax that shoulder and relax that upper arm that will get better over time so let's continue now playing on the upper half of the bow we're going to go on the A string so set your bow Ready to play on the A string in the middle of your bow. Ready? And... Lovely job. Let's go on to the G string now. And this time we're going to start at the point of the bow. So let's see if you can reach to the point of the bow. Again, if you can't quite reach, be aware that your it might be that your hand is too far to the side. So move your hand so that it's almost straight in front of you like that. And we're going to play eight short bows from the point to the middle. Ready? And one. that I am looking here while I play. This is called the point of contact which your bow is in contact with the strings and all sorts of things are going on here. Um, so that is what you can observe when you look at it there. So what I want you to look out for is whether your bow is nearer the fingerboard or maybe nearer the bridge. Try to aim for the middle between those two. And we're going to go on the D string now. So let's see what you can observe. And...
and we're going to continue our awareness exercises so let's lift your arms up in the air and let them flop down and I want you to be careful when you try that that you don't hold your arms like that and you go down really slowly but just take the pressure away straight away and they will just fall down by themselves and that makes you aware of how heavy your arms are and how you can relax them. Now, now I want you to make some fists and really tighten, really, really um, clench those fists, really go very strong and pretend you're sort of weightlifting. So you've got a lot of tension in your arms. And now once your arms are up above your head, drop them down and feel that difference between very floppy arms and you can see they're still sort of dangling by my side aren't they and you it's that feel between tension and relaxation that we're practicing so let's practice it once again shall we so have your hands in fists and really make your hands really strong and your arms and leave them move them up in the air so that you've got really strong arms and then suddenly you take that strength away and your arms just flop down by your side. Now we're going to practice something similar now with your violin and your bow so let's pick them both up and what I'd like you to do is set your violin onto your shoulder first of all and your bow on the D string roughly in the middle and now I want you to make very strong arms again and you can perhaps see that I'm sort of squeezing my bow, squeezing my hands and now I'm taking all that pressure away just like you did up in the air and now I'm really, really relaxed. Try that again. Really strong arms, squeeze it, really make all your muscles very tense and then let go and feel the difference. And you might even Clench your jaws and your neck and your tummy muscles as well and then feel that difference and that is what good violin playing is about is being able to relax whilst you notice any tension so you'll find that in these initial stages of this course we will do a lot of awareness work where we become aware whether our muscles are very tense or very relaxed and of course as you will imagine uh, well, I've imagined uh, the relaxed state is the correct state for good violin playing. Now, let's now put the bow down for a moment and we'll do another exercise um, because whilst we are relaxed, we are also very strong um, and we're also we're building strength today and stamina as well as being aware of where the tension is. So now I'd like you to put your violin up on your shoulder in the correct position. And I want you to check over and just experiment um, with the idea of maybe holding your violin just with your neck like that. Hold your hands around it so in case your shoulder rest might pop off or if you are getting very tired very quickly, which is quite normal. So then hold it again with your hands and let's try that again. Would you be able to hold your violin just with your neck, just like that? And what we're doing is we're building strength uh, in the muscles at the back of your neck. So let's try that one more time, shall we? Just hold it gently. And you may find this really, really challenging. And that is okay, because we're just starting to develop that. So please don't despair if you find this too much today. We can try it again tomorrow and hopefully you will find it a bit easier. And if it doesn't come tomorrow, perhaps the day after tomorrow is your day. So with violin playing, we always take the long view and we're developing lots of different things here, um, all sort of in parallel, so that in three months time or in six months time, these muscle groups have got stronger. It's quite different from our everyday life where we are so often used to pressing a button and you get an instant result on the violin and that's part of its charm playing it, I think. Uh, we're building things and we're gradually becoming stronger and we're gradually becoming more aware. So stick with this course if you can uh, because you will feel that in, in a month's time you will be able to do things that you never dreamt of today. So. Um, that is how things work on the violin. Now, enough talking for now. Let's pick up your bow again and let's have a go at exercise number 
16. An exercise 16, if you have a look at the time signature, you can see that letter C again, and we've said in earlier lessons that stands for common time. And common time is four beats to a bar. So we're going to count to four, so that will be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now you can see a white note at the start of exercise 16, and that is called in English, it's called a minim. In America, you guys call this a half note. And a half note or a minim, they are two counts. And after those two counts, you have two counts rest. You can see that flat line that sits on the middle line of the stave. And that little uh, oblong shape means two counts rest. So in exercise 16, we have got a two bead note and then two counts rest, which are, if we count to four in each bar, are my third and fourth beat. So will you join me play? I'm going to start on the A string, I'm getting ready, after four. One, two, three, four. Let it go. One, two, three, four. And we're just resting the bow on the strings. The next bar is one, two. Keep the bow on the string for three, four. Skipping the repeat, I'm just playing a two count note. One, two, three, four. And you have noticed that my bow has been in contact with the string all the time. And we try and do that and make a habit of that when we play the violin. Um, when we can connect notes, we will always connect them up and you've seen this in lesson five. But we're also leaving the bow on the string as much as we can. So that is one of the general principles of violin playing, is leaving your bow on the string. Now, let's also today have a look at exercise 19. And in exercise 19, take a look at the time signature again. It's C for common time, so we're playing four counts to a bar. And here you can see four crotchet notes, as they are called in England or quarter notes, in a, you call them, in America. So now we're playing one beat to one bow. And I would like you, unlike what it says in the book, I'd like you to start at the heel of the bow and play these counts to the middle, like we practiced earlier in this lesson. So we're still on the A string. Set your bow right here at the heel of the bow on A. Just check over your stance for me whilst we're at it and perhaps also your bow hold. Lovely. And now we're going to count to four and count f and play four notes at the same time. Are we ready? One, two, three, four. for patterns and you will have noticed that whilst we were practicing groups of four notes that was much easier to follow than had I said to you we're playing 17 A's <laughs> 16 of which are short and one of which was long and um, when you think in groups of four counts to a bar it makes the music much easier to play and much more structured. So that's what we're looking. And that's also what we're beginning to practice right now. 
We are going to finish today's lesson with some left hand pizzicato, some plucking the string. So, so let's put your bow down, we don't need it right now. And let's have your violin up on your shoulder. And what I'd like you to do is your left thumb, perhaps you can stick it in the corner there. Can you see that? It's just in that corner. And this corner is actually made for a thumb to fit in. So you can feel how it feels nice and soft and round for your thumb to go in. Now what I'd like you to do is to bring your elbow under the violin like this. So your fingers will move towards the left. Can you see that? Swivel your elbow a couple of times like that. There we go. And now bring your elbow almost in front of your tummy. So your pinky goes right across towards the G string and we're going to pluck this G string with our pinky, like that. There we go. Now some people find this very hard to reach and if that is you, that's perfectly okay. What I'd like you to do in that case is bring your elbow further in front of your tummy. You can see my elbow is right here, right in front of me and your hand needs to go really high up so it might be that you're here and that's why you can't reach so try again to move your elbow right underneath and your fingers high above you can see my fingers are way higher than my strings and this way perhaps you can just about reach let's do it again shall we two three four brilliant now let's find your ring finger, and your ring finger is for plucking the D string. So we'll do that four times. One, two, three, four. Awesome. You can now guess your middle finger is for the A string. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Give your arm a little wriggle like that if that's beginning to get tired, that's okay. And your index finger is for the E string. So let's finally play that. One, two, three, four. Take your violin off your shoulder and give your arm a really good rest. I was saying to you earlier, we're build, building stamina today and that's what you have just been doing. That's been a great lesson, full of lots of techniques that we need in future for violin playing. So well done for sticking with me. I'm so honoured that you've been able to follow this all the way through to the end of the lesson. Perhaps you can write a note down in the comment section below this video to say how that was for you. Was your arm really tired when you were doing that pizzicato, that plucking exercise, or was it not too bad? Now, we've done this exercise so that we're starting to warm up these fingers because very shortly we'll be using the left hand fingers on your violin. So keep practicing and I very much look forward to seeing you in lesson seven. Goodbye.